What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you how to build a simple raised bed in a plastic storage container. Anyone can do this. Let's go! This is the end goal right here. Our toad container filled with edible crops ready to be eaten. In this corner right here, we've got some cauliflower looking fantastic. We've got Swiss chard right below it. We've got some lettuce down here that's ready to be picked. I can grab that one today. On the other side, we've got another lettuce. This one's ready also, absolutely massive, a nice variety too. Between that, we've got some radishes growing and we've got some cabbage in this corner. And you can't forget about the centerpiece. We've got some chamomile growing right down there. This is my spring garden tote. So now I'm gonna show you how I put the whole thing together, planted it out and everything. Then after that, I'll show you how I'm going to put together a summer garden tote too. Tuck's looking for some snacks in here. We'll grab something for him as well. He wants one of these radishes. So let's get to it. Before we get started, I want to mention, it's important to know that the plastic container you're growing in is food safe before you actually plant into it. So on your container, there should be a symbol with numbers between one and seven. Two, four, and five are safe to grow in. One is food safe also, but I believe it's more for single use. On my container, right on the lid, you can see that there's a number five on it. So that's safe to grow in. This kind of plastic, I believe, is the same kind of plastic that they use for the popular tower gardens. The first thing we need to do is grab our tote and drill some holes in the bottom. We want to do this because we need our tote to drain well. We don't want any water sitting at the bottom or this water can get stagnant and go anaerobic. Roots need oxygen to grow, so we need to make sure that our tote drains relatively well. To do this, I just grab my drill and a half inch drill bit, then just drill six holes at the bottom of my tote. Then, after drilling holes in the bottom of my tote, I was ready to start filling it up with soil on May 8th. I like to use my own homemade soil for a bed like this. You can use inorganic bagged soil if you want, but I prefer using my own. I'll show you how I make my own soil later in the video when we put together the summer raised bed in a tote. The kind of compost that I use for my homemade soil is a mushroom compost. And because this was already used to grow mushrooms, it can be a bit depleted at times. To compensate for this, what I like to do is use my secret stuff. This is an all purpose fertilizer, my own fertilizer, JP Secret Stuff. You can get it now at jamesprigioni.com. I take this fertilizer, I sprinkle it on the top of the soil, and then mix it into the top few inches of the soil. Then I was ready to plant. Next, I started to plant out everything for my tote raised bed. In the beginning, I planted a early Jersey Wakefield cabbage right in the corner. This way it could kind of grow out the side. After that, I planted in the opposite corner a Punto Verde cauliflower. I planted these far away from each other so they wouldn't crowd one another out. Then I planted a concept botvian lettuce in the corner. After that, I planted a Pirat butterhead lettuce in the corner too. Then I planted a chamomile right at the center. After that, I planted some Swiss chard between my cauliflower and my lettuce. Then I direct sowed some radishes between my cabbage and my other lettuce. After that, I watered the whole bed in, and the whole time that was going on, I had Tuck watching my back in the corner, and he was also looking, looking out for the garden at the same time. After just 10 days, the bed showed a lot of growth, and my radishes sprouted, so I went through and thinned out the radishes so they wouldn't crowd one another out. At this time, the bed was in full cruise control mode. I just made sure that the soil wasn't drying out, and if it was, I just added water to it. 10 days after that, the plants had almost doubled in size. The lettuces were almost ready to harvest. All I did was just give the plants a little bit of water and they did their thing. Two days later, the plants were growing so well, I had to come by for another peek to check the progress. I looked at the chamomiles to see if some of the flowers had shown up, but not yet. While I was looking at the plants, I noticed that the cabbages were taking some damage. So I went out and I sprayed my cabbages and my cauliflower with BT. This works fantastic to combat the cabbage worm and cabbage loopers. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna grab some. On June 6th, 29 days after I planted everything, I decided to top dress with some fertilizer around my cauliflower. Just because it was growing so big and so fast, the other plants looked like they were doing well, but the cauliflower still had some more time. So I decided to take some of my fertilizer and just top dress around the plant. And then I mixed that fertilizer into the top few inches of the soil and then watered it in. 
The cabbage was looking a lot better too after I sprayed it with the BT. The new growth didn't have any damage on it. It's June 10th today and the bed is looking fantastic. Some of these lettuces are definitely ready to harvest, like this one over here, the Pirat Butterhead, and also the Concept Bobby in the back. The cabbage, the early Jersey Wigfield one, still needs a little bit of time over here, but we've got some radishes that are ready also down there. I'm gonna grab some harvest at the end of the video. When I harvest some of the stuff like the lettuces, I'll make sure to replace that lettuce with another lettuce. I've always got other plants on deck ready to go in. So this is my spring tote. Now I'm going to show you how I'm gonna put the whole thing together, but for a summer version. So if you're in a location where you still have time to plant out a summer garden like me, then you can be able to get your garden going right now. Let's get the summer raised bed tote garden going. To start off, we've got this safe plastic container, the number five. I'm just gonna drill six holes in it. I'm gonna use the holes that they already have for four and then two in the center with a half inch drill bit. There we go. Now we have some holes for drainage and we can start filling this up with the soil. I'll show you guys how I make my own homemade soil. To build my own homemade beautiful soil, this is the same soil that I use for my containers and also for my raised beds. I start off with a brick of cocoa core and I soak that in water so it can retain all that moisture. I prefer using cocoa core or repeat moss for a few reasons. The first reason is the cocoa core isn't acidic. Also, I really love the water retention properties of the cocoa core. It's also really good at draining too, so you don't have a, like, a lot of sitting stagnant water. When using all my ingredients, I like to fill them up in five gallon buckets. This way I can help measure everything out. And I like to build my soil on a tarp. It makes it much easier to mix everything together. My ingredients I'm using are cocoa core, mushroom compost, vermiculite, and perlite. For my ratio, I'm using three buckets of cocoa core. Then I'm using two buckets of compost, a half a bucket of vermiculite, and a half a bucket of perlite. I take that and I mix it all together. I lift the tarp. I feel like this helps mix everything really nicely. But when it comes down to it, getting on your hands and knees and mixing it by hand, I think is the best way to get a really good mixture all together. As you can see, the soil comes out really nice and it's got some great structure to it. A good way to tell is I'll take some of the soil, squeeze it in my hand as hard as I can till it forms like a ball. But then when you touch a little bit, it just breaks all apart. This is how I build my own homemade soil. Then I add in some of my own fertilizer. After that, I'll take my homemade soil, put it into five gallon buckets, and then I'm ready to start putting it into my tote. Just one five gallon bucket at a time. The tote is almost filled. We just have to add a little bit more soil. So this is an 18 gallon tote. These are five gallon buckets. So it takes about three and a half almost buckets to fill this thing up. So we can add a little bit more of our homemade soil up there. You can see it looks really nice. And as I water, it's gonna shrink down just a little bit. That looks good like that. After this, let's get our all purpose secret stuff, JP secret stuff, this fertilizer. It's fantastic stuff. It's what I use to grow all my other plants. Uh, organic, with the Omari label, made in the USA, really quality stuff. So let's uh, get in here so we can mix it in. Just gonna take a nice handful, spread it along the top, like this, a little bit more. Just like this. And I'm only gonna mix it in the top because as we water it'll, you know, it'll go down through the soil. Then we're just gonna mix it into the top few inches just by hand like this. That looks good. Smooth it back out. Then we could start getting our stuff planted. So we'll start with some Lalo Divino lettuce. Let's get planted in this corner right here. Let's find our best one. This one looks good. Pop it out. Add a little mycos, the mycorrhizal association. Sprinkle a little mycos at the base, just like that. Drop it in. This is our summer bed, so we're gonna add some basil. 
in the center here. You notice know, so I like planting stuff dense, kind of my style. Get a little more mycos. Tuck it in. Next, we're going to add a uh, cucumber in this corner. So the cucumber, I'm either going to put this up against the fence, the whole tote, or I'm going to allow the cucumber to sprawl off the side. And then I'll keep it off the ground. We're going to go with the suyo long. I love this variety. So let's pop one of these out. I'm going to pull it by the seed, seedling case leaf, not by the actual leaf. A little more mycos, drop it in. Tap it down. Then we'll come back to this back corner here. In this back corner, I'm going to plant a uh, zucchini. This is a binding zucchini, so I'll plant it in the corner and let it grow out the corner so it doesn't take up the whole bed. This is the Castato Romanesco, my favorite variety of zucchini. Make our hole right here. Some mycos. Drop that one in, pat it down, and we'll just encourage this to grow out the side. Then, in, oops, in the center over here, we're gonna go with the slow bolt leaf lettuce. This is a fantastic leaf lettuce for the summer because it's slow bolt, that's the name, it's slow to bolt. It's really, uh, it's really doesn't bolt when the heat of the summer comes. It's a really nice one. Add a little mycos, drop this into here. You can see how quick and easy this is that you can get a whole entire bed planted in this raised bed made out of a, just a tote. Me and Tuck wanted to do this because anyone could do a garden like this. Maybe you can't build a whole raised bed or something, but a lot of people have some of these totes that they can just plant a garden themselves. Let's get a pepper in. This pepper, a little mycos. All this stuff I started from seed as well. That looks great. And then for a nice centerpiece, let's add a uh, African daisy. Looks like a nice one. We'll start, we'll pop this baby in. And then the theme is very similar to my spring one, but we just have summer veggies in here. We'll just get that to the right level. how beautiful that looks. Now all we have to do is water this baby in. Again, if uh, this is great for new garters and people who can't build their own beds. If you can, I would suggest that you probably grow in like a wooden raised bed or a steel raised bed or something. But I just wanted to you know, show other people that this is a way to grow food too, if it's your only option. I mean, look how well this stuff is growing in that bed right there. Look how much food that's gonna produce in just that small section. So even if you're only on a balcony and you don't have that much space, you could throw a couple of these beds together and be harvesting some of your own fresh food. Let's get everything watered in though. There we go, that looks great. Another reason I love using the coca core instead of the peat moss is the peat moss sometimes, when the peat moss is dry, it's hard to get it wet. It's hard for it to start absorbing water. Once it's wet, it can continue to absorb water and retain that moisture, but the coco core, it seems like it just, it just accepts that water and retains the moisture so easily. Another thing is the cocoa core seems to dry out a little quicker than the peat moss, which you think might be a bad thing, but I think for a bed like this, it's actually a pretty good thing because if I need to water, I could just stay on top of watering and water more and more. But what I don't want is a bed that's just gonna hold onto the moisture and, and rot the roots out. So I like using the cocoa core and my homemade soil. I think it's the best option. Look how easy that was to plant a garden. So we're gonna have the spring one and now we'll have the summer one. We'll be growing food in just a simple container like this. Another great thing about it is you could put this up on top of something if you don't want to bend over on the ground a lot. You can put this up so you don't have to bend over. You can just garden at head height. So I think growing in a tote like this is a great option and it's a great way to start a garden if you haven't gardened before. It's got, I would say it's like easier, it's an easy barrier to entry. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a raised bed. You can just get a tote like this, buy some organic soil if you want, and then start growing some of your own food in your backyard, your balcony, or 
wherever. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck hope that we encourage you in this video to get a garden planted. You don't have to start a massive food forest in your backyard that takes over the whole thing like, like we have back here. It could be as simple as getting a plastic tote that you're not doing anything with, making sure it's food safe, and then starting a garden right in here. I consider this to be a raised bed. It's raised up. It's a bed full of plants. So it's a really easy raised bed anyone can start, I think, in their own garden. That was kind of the main idea for this video. You can be growing look at so much food. I mean, it's even nice to look at. Not to mention soon the chamomile is going to be flowering back here. So that's going to be so awesome to see. Me and Tuck wanted to mention to grab some of the fertilizer down at jamesprigioni.com. If you want to try it out, it works really nice. I think this was a good, you know, a good test and a good picture of how it's working. This is the same fertilizer that I'm using everywhere in the garden this year. I wasn't able to share it because I hadn't got all the certification, everything I needed to be able to start selling it. But now that everything's all good to go, that's what we've been using back here. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a food forest shirt, grab a gardening is life shirt, and be part of the team. We also wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Nathan Bird. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. If you want to be part of the team, just hit the join now button right at the bottom of the screen and you could have your hand in everything that's going on back here. Me and Tuck had an absolute blast. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. He's laying over there. It's kind of hot out here, so he's kind of in the shade doing his little thing, just relaxing. He was up and about before, but it's just kind of chill time for him. James and Tuck will be back, will be back to you again real soon. We out.